Road to Success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank. You are listening, caring partner. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Our guest is Elizabeth Takeshi Shagan yes. of Web Limited. Interesting name, but not quite related to what you do. <laughs> well, um, I think if I explain it, yeah. um, which was Web Limited, first of all, uh, not alone from our initials uh, with my partner, but because of the connectivity. Uh -huh. Connectivity between the construction built environment and the environment, which is a green environment. So we provide that connectivity. What does Web Limited do? Web Limited is a sustainable construction consultancy. Um, basically what we do is our core business is sustainability. And it's uh, looking at um, how we impact on the environment on any activity that we do during construction. And we help the teams mitigate that and also um, we help in facilitation of certification. So for buildings that want to perform uh, better than standard, we help them in certifying to international standards. What we do is we get involved in, first of all, in design teams. Uh, we work with developers and we sit down with the design teams in doing peer review, advising them on how their designs will impact the environment at that very early stage because that's where you can actually capture the most um, all the way through to construction because normally the design team once they complete they hand over to the contractor and it's quite easy during the construction stage to forget or to change what was done in the design stage and we also advise the contractors as well um, on all their activities including how they perform on the site not just the final building also how they treat the site because you can have a fantastic building, but because the contractors ruined the topsoil or had a lot of waste, they leaked diesel for one reason or another. And what inspired this? It was lacking in the industry. It still is in the sense that we're the only ones doing this in the region. Um, and we've had to actually expand and provide services across Africa. The thing is not new. You know, this service is actually inherent in, in the UK, for example, where I've practiced, in Australia, um, a little bit in the Middle East. But that's where we started looking at how do we get this thing across to Kenya? Because yes, we have engineers, we have architects, we have developers, we have the finances. But yet, how do our buildings look? How does our infrastructure look? There's something lacking in between all that. And there's also this notion that just because you care about the environment, uh, all you have to worry about is planting trees. What has been the reaction when you come and tell them, you know, people think about the future, but then they're thinking about their pocket now. Oh, one of the first times we're speaking to some local, very well-known architects, they're just looking at us and thinking, what are you young people come to tell us? I've built Nairobi, I, you know, I've built all these buildings, they're standing, and they're fantastic, I've won awards. There's nothing new you can tell me. There was a lot of uh, people thinking that I've been doing the best I can with what I know. And we couldn't blame them, you know. So it wasn't a blame game as such. We came to tell them, look, let's work together. You can do much more for your money. You can do much better, be more efficient, and actually give your client better. A lot of the teams, when they realize we're on the project, they used to be like, oh no, not you guys again, not the green people. And it's only because they know on uh, the ones who know of us, know the level of expertise that we'll be expecting from them. And the funny thing is, a year later, they're the ones who call us back. They call us and say, hey, look, you know, I learned so much from the last project we did. And it's something that we learned. That there's a lot of education we have to do and provide the information. We don't even have to create the information. It's there. It's available. We should be considered when, you, when we when yes. see a greenhouse, a well, green building. 
first of all, if I, if I go back to green buildings and the name green building emanating from sustainability, sustainability has three pillars. So that's social, environmental, economical. So if we just use that, so by the time you're building, socially you have to look at the impact of that building for the users as well as the environment it's going in. We don't just go into the middle of an estate and build something. People will go against it. <laughs> not even that, if it's, it's detrimental to their health, it's not the right thing to do. So that's a social impact, just to put it lightly. Economical, people I'm want their money back. Money. <laughs> I'm making money out yes. of this. <laughs> Developers, and they want to make the money now, even before it's built. At the same time, it's got to be economical for the people using the building. So I don't want to buy a home or a commercial building. Let's talk about homes. I don't want to buy a home where I'll spend the rest of my life and my kids' lives paying high electricity bills, high water bills. The maintenance is crazy. The external is these colors that you know, I have to paint every six months or, and the cost of that maintenance. So economical both. The developer wants his return and the user shouldn't be using a lot of money on operation. Now, the final one there is environmental. And people just think green buildings is just that environmental aspect. If we reduce all this element of energy and water, we're considering the earth. At the moment, and there's a lot of uh, works published on this, there's 1% of potable drinking water available on earth. So in that 1%, we're using it to build, to mix concrete, you know, to wash roads, just on the landscape so they can have a nice green land. There's no need to use that, this 1%. We can collect rainwater, which people have adapted, not because they know they're doing green building, it's because of necessity. I need the water, you just have to walk around Nairobi and then you'll see people putting buckets outside to collect the water and then they reuse it, they wash dishes with it and all that stuff. If we do it on a large scale, on a, on a whole building, collect from the roof and have it channeled to tanks and reuse that in the building. We are reducing what we would get from the 1%. We are reducing the burden on you know, the utility companies here in Nairobi. So in the same instance is uh, energy, energy use, electricity. Kenya Power have to provide the electricity. Yes, it was a great business to start with, but then now people are demanding more and more. <laughs> exactly. And even they come up with ideas on how you can have green initiatives, you know, change your bulbs, you know, turn your lights off. But if you design the building so that you have windows that let, let the daylight in during the day. Elizabeth, you must take a break. But when we come back, we'd like to know how the government is supporting you mm -hmm. in the green building projects. Okay, thank you. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Don't go away. watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Our guest is Elizabeth Ogeshi Shege of Web Limited. It's amazing. You have an amazing story. What you're doing really, trying to protect the environment and wanting to, um, thinking about our future, about children. It's a journey. How, how do they support you? You know, you don't want to end up being one of those people who say, this is what I want the government to do for me. We actually turned it around and um, we have a lot we can do for the government. And that's what we keep saying. The first thing we did starting off was review the Kenya Vision 2030, the implementation plan. That was back then. Um, we had a few discussions with Mr. Mugo Kibati, uh, who was head of the Vision. There was a lot of things going on already behind the scenes with Vision 2030. And here we are coming in, this company, consultant company, saying, hey, by the way, 
Have you looked at green building as part of this? In reviewing it, we saw there's a lot of construction planned for Kenya. There's a lot of development that's supposed to happen. We call it sustainable, but how sustainable is it actually? You know, have we actually put figures? Are we going to perform 40% better on the use of water? Are we going to perform 50% better on the demand for electricity? Are we just looking at development so that we have a lot of construction? So in that, we saw there is a need to engage the government now rather than later. And that was back then. And we saw there's a lot of earmarked hotels that need to be built. I mean, quite recently, there was a mention about hospitals, 47 hospitals across the country. It was a, a good starting point because from there we managed to review the housing bill which was going into parliament. The saddest thing was there wasn't as much as there could have been in that housing bill on sustainable built environment. So we put in as much as we could, which was just best practice international standard that if you live here and go to South Africa or just go to Zambia, that would be international best practice. You keep mentioning we. Yes. Who is we? Who do you work with? The collective term we that I'm referring to is uh, the team at Web Limited. Uh, there's my co-founder and partner, uh, Boniface Shagan, um, who is the MD of the company. He's also involved in media and arts, and we use that a lot, and he uses that a lot to communicate to the public, to schools. Even the children need to know about green schools and the green building then we don't have to do this in 50 years time again, do we? At the same time, we have a team of engineers who have joined us uh, from universities, some with some experience outside, and we train them on what facilitation of green buildings is. You know, there's nothing like, we don't do that in Kenya. That doesn't work here. Um, there's nothing like, we did that before. Every client or every project has a solution for it. Yes, we might still be saving the same water, but how we save it will have to suit that situation so that we remove that copy-paste mentality that we see in a lot of buildings and, you know, like buildings in Nairobi start looking the same. Around the world, the, the sun rises in the east, sets in the west. But that depends where your east is. If your plot is facing one way or another, the sun could be rising in your living room and setting in your bedroom. For some people, it rises in the bedroom. So, in the living room. So it, you need to consider that because you don't want to place certain parts of the house in the, in the area where it will receive too much sun, then you'll be like, I need to put AC so we can live in this space. So those are the considerations that go into each and every uh, development or should. Give us some examples of some buildings that you've worked with or yeah. are working on using this concept of the green, green building. The current buildings I can mention that um, are quite tangible are uh, Garden City on Thicker Road. So the retail mall that should be opening soon is actually um, a green building and it's certified to international standards. Um, we used the US Green Building Council to certify that. And the reason we went to the US is because yes, the client wanted the US as well as the Kenya Green Building Society wasn't ready then. That was still when we were trying to reactivate it to actually show that, yes, we can do this in Kenya. The rest of the master plan, which is uh, residential, is certified to uh, Greenstar, which is Kenya, a joint venture of Kenya and the Green Building Council South Africa. And the purpose of that is so that in the future, Kenya will be able to certify their buildings to this international benchmarking. Garden City was quite an interesting one because we had a design team that was from all over the world. And the first thing they would ask are, where's your design standards? Where's your Kenyan design standards? then everyone would just look at each other. All the Kenyans is like, <laughs> the one we have is 1970, I think, two. And there's another one we drafted. It's still in parliament or doing the rigmarole. It was written in 1997. But at this moment in time, we can't say we have current standards. So what happened? Our engineers adopt British standards or any other standards that they have to for the client. They're not even British now, they're yeah. European standards. So we've been left behind in the latch. So when you go and ask engineers and architects and they say, oh, we're doing it to British standard this. What lessons have you learned in the last five years? I've, I've learned that there's a very, very thin line between being able to run a company that looks at and really cares about the environment, the thin line between that and the other companies that don't. Because 
we get loads of clients who just call us and say, right, I want my building to be green. It's been constructed, so how can you make it green? So we take time to educate them and say, look, if we were involved at design stage or even when you were sourcing your loan and choosing which site to go on, we could help you more than now. So from those, we just give them ways that they can operate the building to be green and things that they can change in the near future to make it greener. What kind of challenges are you faced with? So the challenges we face are getting the skilled people to do the work because um, as a sustainable construction consultant, we can't do everything on the project. And we find clients would ask us, oh, do you know an architect who's experienced in green building or engineers or a contractor? or even facilities managers, someone who'll operate a green building. We look around and if we can't find anyone, they source, yeah, source from South Africa, uh, UK, the Middle East, and these people will come in and do the work. So we're constantly pushing ourselves to provide this service, but not having that perception that green buildings are expensive. Because sometimes when you say, why don't you do a green building? Everyone turns around and says, how much will it cost? We can actually show, for example, on that building at Gadi City, um, zero added cost. Just because at design stage, people consider the things that they should consider. Elizabeth, thank you so much for being on our show and educating us. Now I have a better understanding oh, of what a green building uh, concept is all about. Fantastic. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you. It's been a pleasure.